Hello everybody and welcome to the Doc Brown's Radio Lab. I am sorry, it has been forever since I have put out a video on this channel. Um, I've just been very busy with different things. I've been trying to get uh, fire alarm equipment going. I've been doing different experiments in the shop here. And today is going to be a pretty interesting video, hopefully. This is going to be a demonstration and a little bit of experimenting with a homemade um, tube tester that I have built. Keep in mind that this is still in the experimental stages. This is just something that I put together using my bench equipment. So, first of all, first off, I'm going to kind of explain my objectives as to what is going on in this video. I have, you can see them right here, I got a couple 6SN7 uh, vacuum tubes. I actually have a lot of these, but these are the ones I think I'm going to be using for this video. Let me just get one out of the box here. The 6SN7 is a dual triode. Here's what it looks like. This is a Sylvania tube. And what I have done here is created a homemade vacuum tube tester. So I have used my Heathkit regulated DC power supply and we're going to have this set to output 250 volts. I'm going to explain that in a minute. For my tube setup I have a old radio chassis that I have scrapped and you see the socket on the corner here. I have wired cables to that all eight pins of that socket that are coming out behind here and all these cables represent the various pins in the socket and they're all going up to my equipment here to get the proper voltages so that's what this radio chassis is here for uh, this meter here we have the vacuum tube voltmeter this is just being used right now as an auxiliary AC meter if I need to probe something here we have my Heath kit audio generator. This is what's being used to feed an audio signal into the control grid of this tube. And of course the power supply is providing the 6.3 volts AC filament voltage, our B plus voltage, and our bias voltage, our negative DC for the grid of the tube. That's what that's for. With our meters, this meter here is going to be reading B plus voltage exactly. We'll turn them on here. This meter here, we'll turn it on, it's going to be reading our grid voltage, so this is going to be a negative voltage. And this meter over here, we'll turn on, this is going to be reading our plate current. So this is going to be plate current in milliamps, this is going to be volts, DC volts, and this is going to be negative bias voltage. And finally, down here, we have the oscilloscope. We'll turn him on. So we have the oscilloscope connected to be able to read the or excuse me, be able to look at the signal going into the uh, grid of the tube and the signal coming out of the plate which is going to be coming down here. I have it isolated via a capacitor. Now I know it's blanking in the camera. There, that looks a little bit better. So this is the grid signal and this is going to be our plate output. But before we get to any of this, what I am going to do is first verify this experiment by hooking up the camera. Let's get it over here we're going to look at, let me reposition myself here, we're going to test the 6SN7 tube on the Hickok Model 533 tube tester. Let's just get the camera readjusted here for a minute so you can get a good look at the tester. Bear with me here. Let's see if I can maybe zoom this out a little bit. Alright, so you can see what's going on here, hopefully. So this is my Hickok tube tester, and I'm going to be checking the 6S and 7, just so we can compare the mutual conductance readings of this tube tester, what it tells me, to my homemade tester on the bench. So let's get started. So first I need to find the 6S and 7 on the roll selector chart. Let me just roll this here. Here it is, 6S and 7. Alright, so I'm only going to be testing one side of the tube on the actual machine over there because of just the way I have it configured on my bench but we're gonna go ahead and check both sections of the tube on this machine anyway here to just get an accurate reading so just for a baseline on this so here we go 6.3 JX so 6.3 JX JX so once on, the, on this machine once you set these three controls we can go ahead and put the tube in the, in the tester let it warm up because it won't actually put any voltages on the tube until you press one of these test buttons. So we'll set our line voltage. Bring that to the center of the meter here. Okay, selectors. Four, five, 
zero six with a one. Four five zero six with a one. Double check. Four five zero six one. Four five zero six one. Okay. Bias twenty three. Twenty three seventy nine for the English. Seventy nine. Press P four and we should read twenty six hundred micromoles. Triode number one. So we're going to put this on the uh, 6,000 scale, so that's the middle scale, so 2,600 should be, here's 2,500 is right in there, so 2,600 should be up here somewhere, basically on the question mark. So here we go, we're going to ch check for shorts, watching the shorts lamp. No shorts. Okay, now we're going to press P4. Interesting, I didn't get a read. Oh, there we go. Just had a dirty tube socket. Okay, so we're reading a little bit above 2000. I'm going to bring it down to the 3000 scale. So, on the 3000 scale, we're reading about 2200. And it says we should read 2600. So, this tube is actually checking a little bit weak. Now, I'm going to check the other side real quick 2103 with a 5. 2103. Three with a five. Same settings all around. Check for shorts. No shorts. This is triode number two. Let's see what we read here. It's triode number two. I guess I'm having. I got a bad uh, tube socket here. Triode number two is reading about. Yeah, about 2,500. About the same. I think you can see that on the meter there. Fill me in a little bit. So we should read about here, we're reading a little weak. So, I mean, that'll be okay for this. Uh, we kind of just know that we're probably going to see a little bit less current here. But just for the heck of it, I am going to throw in my other 6SN7 here and just get an idea of what this one's reading, and we'll go with the strongest one. Whatever tube here is the strongest tube is the one we're going to use in the experiment. So we'll pop this one in there give it a minute to warm up and then we'll check it on the meter or on the tester short check no shorts there you go no shorts and P4 and again this damn tube socket is I never had problems with this one before it must just be a little bit dirty all right, this one's reading a little bit weaker, so I'm going to go with the one that we just pulled out. The first one. So, we'll take this over to the bench now, and we'll actually get started here. Sorry for all the camera work. I just got to be able to move stuff around, you know, to reconfigure everything. So we'll zoom out, kind of get everything positioned the way I want it. Oh, and I also have an amateur radio book here that I was using for a reference to figure out the appropriate voltages to put on this tube. There's a reference in the back here that shows us, here's my marker. So, I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this on the camera, but I just have this here for a reference guide. If you look at the position for a 6SN7, there it is. I don't know if you can, yeah, you're not going to be able to see that, but... If I zoom in to a 6SN7 right there, it says our plate should be 250, our bias should be negative 8, and we should see a current of 9 milliamps. So that is what I am going off of is that reference guide because that's basically standard operation for this tube. So let's get the test started. So first thing we're going to do is switch our high voltage power supply on. But before we do that, I have to do one thing here to make this accurate. I have to... Uh, configure the, the socket here real quick because I have a capacitor here I to hook up my scope so I just have to see what pin is number five which is that one so pin number five the capacitor is just going to go across number five like that now the reason this goes on number five is just so I can hook up the oscilloscope without the uh, you know without having to put a wire under the socket so let me just get this connected. I know it's not 
you know, really the proper way to do it, but just how I have it set up because this is a temporary installation. So now we can connect our scope lead here to the tube under test. All right, so now our scope's connected. So when we turn it, turn everything on, we should get some results here. So turn on the supply. Okay, and now per the instructions, we're gonna go ahead and set our plate voltage. So we need to bring up our plate voltage to see 250 here on the tube socket. So here we go, bringing up the B plus now. There you go, we got 118 volts, 150 volts. Well, actually, before I do that, we actually want to bring up the bias voltage first. So we need to set this to negative 8. So if we look at this meter here, we need to put this up to negative 8 volts. That way we have a bias signal on the tube. It's going to limit our current. So we're going to get this right to negative 8 if I can. There we go. So that's essentially negative 8. I mean, you're not going to get it exactly perfect. There. Dead on, negative 8 volts. Now we can bring up our B plus over here. So we need to take up the B plus to 250 volts. Two hundred and fifty volts. So we have two hundred and fifty volts of plate voltage. We got negative eight bias voltage. And what is our current? Sixteen milliamps. That seems a little high. We should be reading negative or I'm sorry, we should be reading nine milliamps. I don't know why I'm reading fifteen milliamps there. Just making sure nothing is short it out here. Yeah, we're good at 250 negative 8. We should see about 9 milliamps. Not that much, but let's try to get a signal on the scope here. My scope is trying to just get the best contact for my scope. I think my lead is coming off. Maybe I got a bad ground or something here. There we go. So you can see my scope down here now if I adjust the signal. So you can see if I bring this one up a little bit. So this tube is working. And there we go. The scope was just set wrong. So we're, we're pulling 5 milliamps. See 5.6 milliamps and the tube is operating. So we have a signal going into the control grid up here, and we have a much larger signal coming out on the plate. Now the reason we have a larger signal coming out of the plate is because the tube is amplifying that signal. So per the book, it says put 250 volts on the plate, negative 8 volts of grid bias on the grid, and we should see a result of 9 milliamps. Now keep in mind this tube tested weak. This tube is drawing 5 milliamps. So that is to be expected because this tube is a little bit weaker in the mutual conductance and we're going to end up seeing a little bit less current draw because of the fact that the tube is a little bit weaker. Now, the other thing I want to mention here is this. This is a uh, Sencor resistance capacitance box. I have it set as a cathode resistor or plate resistor in this circuit. So you can see right here I just have the output of the plate meter going into the resistor and coming out of the resistor and going to the plate of the tube. So this is just giving us a plate resistance value per the book. It says it should be, I think it was 7, yeah, 7 K ohms. And that's allowing us to be able to measure our plate signal coming off the tube there. So if I zoom the scope out, you can see our signal here. We have a small signal going in and a big signal coming out. Now changing these values a little bit, if I bring down the bias voltage slightly so we're at negative 8 right now we're gonna bring the bias down just a little bit till we actually get 9 milliamps on the meter here per what a strong tube would be so per the book that would be a perfect tube would be 9 milliamps but look instead of negative 8 we have to have it at negative 6 so that just means that the tubes a little bit weaker and again up here we got 250 volts on the plate. We got about 9 milliamps being drawn on the B plus line. 
and this here this meter showing our audio signal level going into the grid and then on our scope which is the cool part we can see we have a much larger signal coming out that is very good that indicates that this tube is amplifying properly get a little better look at that so that's what you want to see you want to see the tube amplifying a signal now I think I did a pretty good job with this whole experiment set up it was just kind of something I wanted to do to just give me something to do in the shop and compare against my Hickok tube tester so the other thing I'm going to do here real quick is use my vacuum tube voltmeter I got some probes coming out of it right here and I'm just going to measure the AC voltage across the um, plate resistor so that should basically tell us what signal is being driven or coming out of the plate rather so let's see if we can zoom in on that meter face. So I'm on the 15 volt scale, which is this first scale on the bottom from the top. See, it says 15, 0, and 15. So that's the scale we're looking at. I'm going to just read across with the meter, um, see if I can get over there and read across the plate. I might have to get on the other side here. One moment, without getting in the way of the camera. Let's see if I can get on the plate here. So you can see what I'm reading. And it's a very small voltage, so I gotta turn around the meter to a lower scale. And adjust it here. So let's go ahead and measure the AC on the plate circuit. Alright, so you can see there's a little bit of AC there. I got a zero the meter out again because these VTVMs, you constantly got to zero them because they drift on you. So you got to short the probes and then zero the meter out. So I'm now on the, yeah, the 15 volt scale. Put it down to the 5 volt scale. So it's getting this dialed in. So 5 volt scale is going to be the top scale, 0 to 5 volts. So let's just see what our AC is on this plate resistor. Okay, that's about 2.5 volts is what I read there. And that would be correct because according to the audio generator, we're putting out about 2.5 volts because there's one and then it's, it's in the middle somewhere there so that's good that tells us that across the plate resistor now the reason I had to use a vacuum tube voltmeter for that measurement was because the vacuum tube voltmeter can measure AC when there's a DC potential already across that AC because again we've got 9 milliamps DC flowing through the circuit and I needed to have a meter that was able to just pick off the AC signal uh, that's going into the tube so again, we can see on our oscilloscope, we have a nice clean signal coming in, a sine wave, and we got a nice big signal coming out, indicating the tube is amplifying. Now the other important thing with this is, whenever you're using a vacuum tube voltmeter, you have to make sure, of course, that the polarity is right, so you don't ping the needle backwards. And the other thing is, uh, we're drawing 9 milliamps with 250 volts, but you always got to pay attention to your grid bias. We have negative 6 volts. If you turn that too low and you have your plate voltage high, you're going to get a high current here because you're going to bias the tube on harder than it was meant to be. Because the tube, as you lower the control grid voltage, you're going to allow more electrons to flow from the cathode to anode and thus you're going to increase the plate current. The other thing I wanted to mention if you do an experiment like this is you have to use capacitors. I mean, I guess you don't have to, but I like to do it because when I have my scope connected to these voltages, I want to isolate the scope with a capacitor so that I'm not backfeeding 250 volts into my scope. I don't want to blow my scope up, so I connect the scope. If you notice here, there's a capacitor right here. I have the scope probe connected to the other side of the capacitor that's on the plate, so I'm not just hooking this up right to the 250 volts because... I don't want to burn on my scope, so I have to have it isolated with a capacitor. I also have the audio generator over here isolated from a capacitor as well, 
just so I don't blow up my test equipment. So that's kind of a rundown on this basic experiment and it's pretty scientific because what I can end up doing is down the road here I can reconfigure this for varying uh, types of tubes for example a 6F6 which I already tried this once and I have a speaker back there with an output transformer on it so if we hook up a 6F6 tube I can hook up an output transformer and speaker and we can actually listen to the tone that we're putting in not just see it on the meter we'll be able to actually hear the tube amplifying so I think that's pretty cool as well and this is overall just a fun experiment to do because if you have a tube tester you're able to compare a commercially built tube tester against your own equipment with your own parameters and setup because what I've noticed is every commercial tube tester does things differently you know they all might be a mutual conductance tester but every one is going to have set standards for their circuits and they're not all going to be accurate to what you might find in a real circuit that's why the best test for any vacuum tube is going to be in the circuit that is used in. Yes, a tube tester will find bad tubes that have shorts or opens in them, but they won't necessarily tell you if you have a good tube because every circuit varies. You know, a radio circuit is going to be different from an oscillator in a TV. They just work differently. So every tube is going to be subjected to different operating parameters. But this is a good scientific test to be able to determine, you know, okay how does this tube perform when I know what I'm applying to it you know I know what I'm doing here I know what equipment I'm using I know what voltages I'm putting on the tube and I know how I'm measuring it with the current meter and the oscilloscope on my Hickok tester I don't necessarily know how they're actually measuring that uh, mutual conductance value there is a way to calculate the mutual conductance with this you can look at the turn up the scale here on this on the scope you can look at the uh, scale there and end up finding out what your actual uh, voltage is there to be able to determine a mutual conductance um, I'm not going to do this in this video but I think a future video I will cover that because I think it's pretty interesting to be able to understand how to do something like that and you can see right there lower it so you can kind of see we're putting out quite a bit signal big signal there into the tube so yeah that was kind of an interesting experiment there I just wanted to compare against my Hickok mutual conductance tube tester so that's really it for the moment I just figured I'd put out a quick video showing you what I've been up to in the shop here and different things I can do and the other thing you can do with this is vary this uh, plate resistance which will change the um, current draw of the tube because you're varying the resistance in the plate circuit that's pretty critical in something like a real life circuit so what I'm going to do to end all this now is we're going to go ahead and turn off our supply standby and you'll see our voltages are going to drop and the signal on the scope is going to collapse to zero here because that's our plate output so you can see that flat line so we now have no voltage here zero zero and zero current so that was about it that was just kind of a quick experiment here using the 6s and 7 tube to measure some things and kind of see how it performs in a real life scenario of a test setup so if we go back over here real quick uh, to the uh, Hickok tester you can see that the Hickok tester I just wanted to compare against so what we'll do is we'll check one more tube here on the Hickok tester and then that will basically conclude the video because what I'm going to end up doing is going back to this at a later time and I'm going to pull out some more 6s and 7s run them through this machine and then we're going to run them through the equipment over there and you know do a more direct comparison of multiple tubes I mean this was just using two tubes but I've got tons of these 6s and 7s so I think I'm gonna do that and just kinda run through each tube at a time and see what happens so uh, this is another one here let me get it out I'll just end the video off by checking another one because I haven't done this sort of thing in a while for the for YouTube so I figured I would so when I operate this you uh, set it up per the chart and then once you get your filament and your two filament selectors here 
the tube warms up, you can set all these up. So these are all still set up. We'll do the shorts check. Now when you do the shorts check, you watch this light. Make sure it does not stay on. A flash is normal. It did not stay on. So we can proceed now to hitting P4 and looking at our mutual conductance reading, which is a little weak. It's below 2,000 there. Can you see that? Sorry. So you can see it's a little weak, but it is there. So this tube is functional, and I know my machine's uh, accurate because I did calibrate it. So Yeah, that's going to be about it, guys. And uh, if you like this video, please let me know. Thank you very much for watching, and stay around for future content to come. I've got a lot more equipment coming in the shop. I've got a lot more experiments we're going to be running in here using this various equipment. So once again, thank you all for watching, and stay tuned for more content to come later.